In this video, we're going to be unboxing Motec's M130 ECU using their GPA firmware package. We'll be talking about Motec pricing, we'll be talking about the firmware packages and what they mean, we'll find out what this ECU can actually do, and we'll also talk about why not all ECUs are created equal. So let's get into it. Today we're going to be unboxing and taking a look at Motec's M130 ECU coupled with their GPA or General Purpose Advanced Firmware. I'm actually going to start though by addressing the elephant in the room which is the perceived value of Motec products. I think it's fair to say that most people expect Motec products to be cringingly expensive. Maybe this was born out of their previous range, the 100 series, because they came in a gold box and let's be honest, gold looks expensive. The reality these days though is the M130, their entry level M1 product using the GPA firmware is actually not as expensive as you might think. Now before you get too confused about firmware and what that means, don't worry because we're going to be talking all about that really shortly. Now, one of the problems with pricing the Motec product is that it's not possible to have a global price that works anywhere in the world. This is because different countries have different import duties etc. So the only true way to get an accurate value is to contact your local Motec dealer. What we can do though is give you some perspective. And you may be surprised to find that an ECU such as this M130 prices somewhere comparably with other ECUs in the semi-professional and club level motorsport vicinity such as perhaps those offerings from the likes of AEM, Haltech and Link. Now that we've dealt with the pricing, we can see what we actually get in the box. But before we open it, I wanted to talk about this box. One of the things that we have noticed is that Motec have really upped their game with their packaging. With their 100 series ECUs, they used to come delivered in pink bubble wrap, and really, that's probably not indicative of the quality of the product you're buying. Now we've got a nice, sturdy plastic box. It's going to protect that ECU as it's shipped anywhere in the world. Let's open it up and we'll see what we've got. So inside the box we start with the obligatory Motec sticker. You can stick this somewhere in your car showing your affiliation to the brand. It's undoubtedly going to add a little bit of extra horsepower too. Next we've got the ECU which is obviously the main part everyone's interested in. It's well protected by the foam inside of the case. We take it out of the case. We can see that the ECU itself is a cast magnesium case. It's quite a small footprint which certainly helps with your flexibility and whereabouts you want to mount this inside your car. The connectors used on the M130 range are the AMP Super Seal connectors. Now this is quite handy because these are a really common connector in the aftermarket ECU world and they're also really easy for home enthusiasts to work with. This means that you don't necessarily have to be spending thousands on a professionally assembled harness. This is something that is within the range of a competent home enthusiast. The case on the M130 is also relatively sealed to both dust and water with an IP66 rating. Now it's important to mention here that this doesn't make the ECU submersible so it's not going to be worth using on your submarine. What it does mean though is that if you're fitting this ECU to a UTV or something of that nature then it's going to be protected against splashes of water when you're cleaning that UTV down or running through some big puddles. Lastly inside the box we've also got the obligatory USB key and this has all of Motec's latest software and documentation on it. I will mention though that this documentation and software does get updated relatively frequently so you can always head to Motec's website to get the latest version of both software, documentation and firmware for your particular ECU model. Now that we've seen what we get in the box, let's talk about the features included in the M130 and find out what actually makes it tick. Starting with the basics, the M130 includes 8 ignition drives and 8 peak and hold or saturated injector drives giving you a lot of flexibility around the type of injector you can run. This means that the M130 is ideally suited for engines of up to 8 cylinders and can provide full sequential fuel injection control as well as direct spark ignition. With our engines becoming increasingly complex these days, controlling the fuel and spark is only a small part of the equation. The M130 will also support engines with continuously variable cam control and has the ability to control up to four camshafts. It will also support drive-by-wire throttle control with the ability to control two separate throttle bodies. 
Lastly, there are also two dedicated knock sensor inputs, and by using these, the ECU can provide closed loop knock control, protecting the engine from knock or detonation. It's important to note that the knock detection system on the ECU is not a band aid for poorly tuning your engine. This is really another tool that the tuner can use while they are optimizing the tune on the dyno. And this system, in order to work properly, does require some input from the tuner in order to get it dialed in so that it can accurately detect knock. In terms of other inputs and outputs from the ECU, there are seven universal digital inputs. Now these are an input that can be used for a variety of functions. They can be used for engine speed and position inputs, wheel speed sensor inputs, or much simpler switched inputs from the driver. There are also eight analog voltage inputs, and these can be used for a variety of inputs to the ECU, such as manifold absolute pressure sensors, oil pressure, fuel pressure and a range of other inputs such as driver switches. There are also four dedicated analog temperature inputs for sensors such as inlet manifold temperature and maybe ambient temperature detection. Since the ECU that we've got here uses Motex entry level GPA firmware, this does mean that it misses out on some of the advanced functionality that's included in their GPR or race firmware. This includes functions such as traction control, launch control and closed loop gear shift control. The GPA firmware is probably going to be more than enough for most enthusiasts, however if you do get to a point where you need to upgrade, Motec do also offer the ability to exchange your firmware for a fee and upgrade to the more advanced functionality. Since we've just talked about two of the firmware options from Motec, this is a good time to dive in a little bit deeper and talk about how that firmware works. Really when it comes down to it, the Motec M1 range is just an electronics box and it's going to be able to do just about anything you want it to do depending on how it's programmed. Motec provide different firmware depending on what you're trying to do. We've talked about GPA and GPR, they also have different firmware that is dedicated to a particular vehicle such as for example the Nissan R35 GTR. There's also firmware available if you want to run a paddle shifted sequential gearbox. When you're considering the purchase of an aftermarket ECU for your particular project, there are a mind-boggling array of options from manufacturers out there. When you're shopping on the basis of a feature set, which you're looking at on the internet though, this can be a little bit misleading and it can be a little bit confusing. What I'm basically saying here is that not all ECUs and not all ECU functions work the same. Let's take for example, knock control. There are a variety of ECUs that are now providing knock control, but they're not all created equal. In order for an ECU to provide really advanced and sophisticated knock control that works exceptionally well under all conditions, it does require a range of adjustability for the tuner. Some of these knock control strategies in other ECUs are very limited and basically all you can do is set a gain value and then adjust the background noise threshold to suit. The M1 on the other hand gives the tuner the ability to choose the specific frequency at which knock is occurring. What we can actually do is select up to four frequencies that the built-in digital signal processor will look through and this allows it to do a better job of distinguishing knock from background engine noise. In our own experience on our Toyota 86, we actually found that to get the best possible results we used two separate frequencies. Essentially two cylinders had a slightly different knock frequency than the other two. By allowing us to choose up to four different frequencies we can really dial in that knock control and make sure that it works perfectly. On top of this though we've also got a lot of functionality in the M1 that defines how the ECU will respond if knock is occurring. In other words how aggressively the ignition timing will be retarded, how much timing can be removed and then also how quickly it will be added back in when that knock is removed. It's these little subtleties that can make a big difference between a function that looks good on paper and one that actually works and protects your engine. The other aspect that's really easy to overlook when you're comparing different ECUs is the processing speed and also the way the code that the ECU operates on has been written. Now on paper this might not seem that important but it can make a difference. When we're tuning a car on a dyno under steady state conditions this is incredibly easy because 
nothing's changing. Makes it easy for us to supply the correct amount of fuel and the correct ignition timing. And under these conditions, basically any ECU should be able to provide us almost identical power and torque. Unfortunately, when we take our car and we're out on the racetrack driving it hard, the engine is operating very different to how it was on the dyno. The load, the RPM, the throttle position are all constantly changing. And with some ECUs, once the ECU has gone through its calculation process and it's decided what volume of fuel to deliver and what ignition timing to deliver, that's fixed. And if the engine RPM or the airflow into the engine change after that calculation has been completed, then what this is going to mean is that the ignition timing won't be what the ECU is asking for and we may have too much or too little fuel being delivered to the cylinder. With the Motec M1 processing power, this allows the ECU to recalculate all of the ignition and fuel delivery aspects while the engine is operating and takes into account any changes in airflow or RPM once the calculation has started. The difference is, once we've got our car off the dyno, once it's tuned and it's out in the real world, the cycle to cycle fuel and ignition control is very accurate in the M1. It's always delivering the correct amount of fuel and the correct ignition timing. This gives the M1 ECU the ability to deliver more consistent power and torque under these transient conditions. Over my career, I've dealt with a huge range of ECUs in the aftermarket, and unfortunately, all of them come with a few downsides, and in this regard, Motec is not immune. Firstly, the M1 range of ECUs don't contain a built-in wideband controller. So you're going to need to factor in the cost of an external wideband controller when you're considering your purchase. Motec do have you covered here because they provide both their LTC or Lambda to CAN as well as their dual LTC which is suited for V configuration engines and these are really easy to connect to the M1 range as they communicate their air fuel ratio data directly to the ECU via CAN. This brings me to my second downside with the M1 range in that the CAN bus or CAN template inside the ECU is not user adjustable. This essentially limits you to using MoTeC products for expansion, such as the Lambda to CAN unit we've just talked about, as well as their E888 or E816, which are common options if you go through all of the available inputs and outputs on the M1 and you need to add more sensors or control more outputs. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit and deal with something that I overlooked at the start of this unboxing, and that is the mounting holes that we can see here on the case of the ECU. Now, this is something that, surprisingly, a huge number of ECU manufacturers completely overlook. Motec themselves were guilty of this on their older 100 series ECUs, where there was no way of easily and securely mounting the ECU. With these holes, it makes it really, really easy. You don't need any double-sided tape, and you can be confident your ECU isn't going anywhere. In order to tune the M1 range of ECUs, you're going to use Motec's M1 Tune software. Now, coincidentally, this is a free download, so feel free to head along to Motec's website, download a copy, have a look around and get familiar with it. One of the things we often hear about the M1 range is the complexity of the ECU. And to a degree, this is true. We're talking about an ECU that provides a lot of control and a lot of flexibility, and it's also designed to support just about any engine that you can think of running. In order to do this and do this well, the ECU does require a certain level of complexity. However, Motec have made this easier for the tuner because for a lot of the common options that you're going to need to be selecting when setting up your ECU, this can be done from a drop-down menu of common options. This can be done, for example, when you're setting up the trigger inputs for your particular ECU, also when you're selecting the type of injector you've fitted. Now, if you are dealing with something a little bit peculiar, maybe you're dealing with an injector which Motec haven't characterised, that's okay too, provided you can get the correct information from the injector manufacturer, you can then manually enter this data yourself, and you're going to get just as good a results out of the ECU. The Motec M1 range work on what's referred to as a volumetric efficiency or VE based fuel model. Now this has become a bit of a catch cry out there in the aftermarket ECU tuning world these days. However, when we get down to the nitty gritty, it really isn't that complex. What it simply means is that the fuel table that we tune isn't really a fuel table at all. It's actually a volumetric efficiency table, and we're simply telling the ECU how much air is entering the engine cylinders at each point in the load and RPM table. 
Now, if we do our job properly here, it actually makes our tuning really easy. For example, once the engine is tuned, we could swap to a different set of injectors, and provided we enter the correct details for our new injectors, the engine will start, it will run, and it will provide the same air fuel ratio as we had with the previous set of injectors. So there you go, the Motec M130 ECU with their GPA firmware package. So if you're in the market for a new ECU, make sure you check this ECU out, get a price from your local Motec dealer, compare it to the other ECUs you're considering, you might be pleasantly surprised. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson. You'll learn about performance engine building and EFI tuning, and you'll also have the chance to ask questions which I'll be answering live. Remember, it's 100% free, so follow the link to claim your spot.